Welcome everyone to the all important clash between Gukesh and Sanan Sugiro. This is the 5th round of the Chennai Grand Masters and Gukesh is in joint lead along with Hari Krishna. If he wins here, he will have a chance to finish on top after the round. Let's see how it goes. Sanan opens the game with 1e4. Now, with 2 and half out of 4, Gukesh might want to play this a little safe or aggressive. We do not know. He goes e5 which shows to some extent that he's going for a solid kind of a choice. Knight comes out to f3 and now Gukesh brings his knight out to c6. So it's a normal opening and ooh Italian on the board. Sanan Sugiro wants to fight for the game here that's going to be interesting because Italian generally leads to fighting positions it leads to interesting games d3 played and these are all very well known opening moves Gukesh plays his knight out to f6 and now will Sanan castle no he first goes knight d2 now this move order maybe not the most popular way to play you take away some of the flexibility, you know, your bishop g5 ideas are gone. The knight could uh, have gone to a3 later. But all of this is uh, now gone away. But the position is very, very standard. He will play c3 now or h3 or rook e1. These are all common moves. c3 played. And Gukesh plays another typical move, a6, making square for the bishop to drop back on a7 if needed. And now, Sanan plays a4, gaining space on the queen side. And here, bishop drops back to a7. And how does he go h3 played? Now, one idea is to go directly bishop e6. And if you take, then bishop f takes e6. But first, Gukesh goes h6. A useful move in the position and Sanan also plays rook e1. So we are 10 moves in the opening, both sides making many useful moves and Gukesh goes rook e8. Now this move has the idea to bring the bishop here so that when you take, to take back with the rook. Knight f1, the knight is going to g3 and eventually look at the f5 square. Bishop comes out to e6. So if you take, it will be pawn takes... Uh, here rook takes would be the right move because pawn takes means your rook would love would have loved to be on the f file yes rook takes and how does sanan continue now does he go b4 yes he goes b4 he sort of starts to expand on the queen side a bit and gukesh now plays in the center with d5 this is an interesting moment. Will Sanan take? No, he goes queen c2. He keeps the structure intact. Later on, I think one of the problems that black faces here is, is this e5 pawn. And knight e7 is such a um, move that actually weakens this pawn. He may have to take with the queen then, but then there could be c4. He takes with the f knight. Guys, isn't the e5 pawn hanging? Knight takes e5 is in the air. He can actually take it. Will Sanan take that extra pawn? Yes, he takes it. Knight takes e5 played. What is happening here? Can Gukesh? Has just Gukesh blundered a pawn or what? But Gukesh is ready for this move. He has almost 25 minutes extra on the clock. He goes knight g6. And you can't take the knight because your rook is hanging. So he plays pawn to d4. He supports the knight in the center of the board. And Gukesh takes it. Very interesting stuff here. Because although Gukesh is a pawn down, just look at that beautiful bishop on a7. It's spitting fire on the long diagonal. d takes e5 and now queen e7. You attack this pawn. It can't be defended. You have to. You can't play f4 because this diagonal... Uh, keeps the pawn pinned. So he plays queen e7. How is Sanan going to save that pawn? You can't go bishop f4. The knight controls that square. He goes queen e4. Classy move because now the d5 knight is hanging. You need to save it. So he saves it because knight takes c3 would have been met with queen takes b7. So c6 is the strongest move. 
and now Sanan defends his c3 pawn. But now Gukesh can actually build up pressure on the e5 pawn by bringing in his last piece. He brings his rook into the game. Very, very interesting. The position is roundabout equal, but Sanan has a good move here. Let's see if he finds it. Yes, he plays queen to g4. And the point being that if you take on e5, I take here, queen takes, rook e1. You have to save your rook and I can take bishop takes at 6 with this trouble. So f6 is a beautiful move by Gukesh here. He's pushed to c4. Now, you can't take on b4 because after take, take, there is e takes f6. But I love the move Gukesh plays. Queen takes f5 is met with rook f8 and pressure down to the f2 pawn. So he has to move the queen back. Queen e2 was better because after knight takes b4, the bishop could have gone to c3 and knight c2 would have been defended. But with this move, it is not a good idea. Now Gukesh was threatening knight to c2 and bishop c3 was impossible. All of a sudden, Gukesh has recovered his pawn and is now positionally better. a5 is played to cement the knight on the b4 square. Now, this pawn is loose. So, knight comes to g3 attacking the f5 pawn. Interesting. Gukesh goes queen h4. If knight takes f5, the f2 pawn is hanging. Look at that. The bishop and the queen. Look at the f2 square. And look, Sanan's time is 4 minutes. And Gukesh has 27 minutes. Pushes the pawn forward, pinning the rook here. But isn't that a free pawn? Gukesh chops it off and he's like, thank you, Sanan, for that pawn. Bishop comes up to e3, trying to neutralize the bishop on that long diagonal. Will Gukesh take that bishop? I think that seems like the logical thing to do. He takes it. Bishop takes e3. And now rook takes e3. But is there a fork here? A pawn fork with pawn coming forward to f4. Yes, Gukesh plays it. Because if knight f5, there is queen g5 and black wins. Rook e4 is the only move pinning the pawn this way so that you can't take the knight. But now Gukesh can move his queen away. That seems like a logical move to play. But he goes knight d5. He, he defends this. He improves his knight. But he is giving up the b7 pawn and Sanan takes it. Greedy Sanan there taking the pawn on b7. But it feels like a poisoned pawn. Now queen can move away. I think that's a good move. Queen g5. Yes. Excellent move. Attacking the knight here. The knight has to move. He goes knight f1. And now is f3 in the air? Is rook g6 in the air? There is a knight c3 move also, which can be considered knight c3, rook e1, knight e2. That's a very, very interesting piece. Uh, sacrifice g3 played here by Sanan. He was getting mated on g2. And here, Gukesh now has exposed the king completely. White's king stands very weak. The rook comes into e1. But now the h3 pawn is hanging. You can chop that off. Queen takes h3. Will Gukesh take it? Yes, he takes the pawn on h3. He's now a pawn up and the white king is in shambles. What is Sanan doing? And you can see Gukesh looks very relaxed there. Queen comes back to b3. And a very good move now is rook f8. Just putting one more piece there. Oh, he takes there. It's... Maybe slightly inaccurate. Sanan must take back with the pawn. Which is the best move here. But with low on time, he takes with the knight. And it's more logical to keep the knight there. And the pawn on f2. But now, Gukesh can go h5, h4. That's a good idea. To open up this file. But he's thinking. He has 10 minutes still. He goes rook f8. This is also a very good move. Because one of the main ideas here... It can be to play your rook to h5, f5 and h5 and checkmate him here. The rook comes to e3. And now rook f5. I think that's a great move. It seems like this square is not available, but it is. The knight is pinned. Gukesh plays it. He's playing fantastic chess here. Gukesh is very close to getting the sole lead in the tournament because Hari Krishna has already drawn his game, which means he's on 3 out of 5, while Gukesh with a win can move to 3.5 out of 5. He comes back in his chair. He sits down. Now Rook H5 is possible. But first he takes the exchange. Thank you so much, Sanan, because the knight was unpinned. And now either Rook H5, but then there is Queen F3 somehow stopping the mate. 
in one. So you need to actually go back with your rook here. Rook goes back to f8 and this is very wise by Gukesh because now he saved his back rank. He's going back to e6 and he will be extra material. He has a pawn and an exchange up. The rook is hanging. You need to save the rook. But will Gukesh play rook e6 or will he go back? He goes back queen e6. So Gukesh saying to Sanan, look, I am an exchange up and a pawn up. And I will get the job done now. I don't need to do anything spectacular. And that's a sign of a man who is very well matured. Although Gukesh is just 17 years old, his play is absolutely flawless in this game. And he plays his rook to g4, threatening to take the a pawn, threatening queen c4. And it's time to call it a day for Sanan Sugirov. He's tried hard. He's played fighting chess. But Gukesh proved to be very, very powerful today. And Gukesh will take the sole lead in this tournament. With that and two rounds to go, he may have excellent chances to win this event. And of course, make a claim for the top FIDE circuit spot and also a spot in the candidates. That will be huge. But for now, yes, Sanan extends its hand in resignation. Game is over. Gukesh has done it. Three and a half out of five. This was a spectacular game. Thank you.